Mr. Geary of the Pop Culture Minefield. Now you're here for a specific reason, Gary. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Gary. Doing all right. Yeah, glad to you How are you doing, so, sir? I'm doing good. I'm looking forward to talking some Blade Runner with you when uh, the <laughs> opportunity arises. We have got to do another show, and I've because like we're not going to have a lot of the cast and crew <laughs> much longer. And I'm friends with these people, okay. and I want to get them on, uh, especially you know Vicky. She was you know the um, second AD trainee is what she was. But she was there for a lot of the film and, and has so many stories. And I know you would like to meet her. She's oh, a yeah, sweetheart. Sure. She's worked on The Color Purple. So many movies she's got under her belt. And just a sweet. What about The Color Blue? Uh, you know what? I don't know if she worked on that one. It wasn't <laughs> that a blue movie, I think. Like I don't know. Porn. Anyway, it was a joke. Uh, <laughs> Vindicated Ink, though. You're, you're, you got a new comic coming out. For those who don't do. know, Geary Draws. He does drawings. I draw. I love that. Like I do a lot of conventions in the past and nothing cracks me up more than somebody walk up and say, you're a good drawer. <laughs> My answer is like, like sock drawer or underwear drawer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. So you got a new comic coming out. Let's, uh, let's not uh, waste it's, too much it's time. Technically let's get not it on. new. This is a book that I started 10 years ago. And, um, uh, the campaign we ran for it on Kickstarter was successful to a certain degree. Uh, something got fouled up, and some of the money that was put in never was given to us. The, the, the card was never charged, or they defaulted on it. So the writers got paid. I never got paid, but I still drew three chapters of the book. But then I had to start making money again. And so I put it on the back burner that I was going to eventually get to it. And this was and 10 years had, ago, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, 10 years ago. And one thing after another, uh, problematic people, nightmare scenarios with people, um, I ended up losing the drive to pick it back up. I kept looking at it going, I want to do this. I want to do this. But I keep having to earn money. I was raising my kid by myself, all that shit, and it, which is tough when I'm not getting any child support. I had to pay for everything on my own. And uh, I just needed to stay afloat. And finally, she grew up, moved out, and I came back to Missouri. And that's when we, Keith and I started planning to do the show. Within one year, we were doing a show. And I kept trying to get it going, but I was doing everything wrong. I think I was doing it wrong, going about everything wrong. And I just couldn't get it back in there. But the big thing is I didn't quite have the fire in my belly. And sometimes it takes something to get that fire back in. And um, what ended up happening was uh, um, the writer strike killed my career this year. I've gone six months without pay. Actually, a little over six months. Yeah. And I was doing little things here and there, uh, but I was afraid to pick up any new contracts. But even after the, co you know, the contracts were agreed to, Money still wasn't coming in, and I, I I started panicking as it was hitting November. And I'm like, I've got to do something. And and all of a sudden, I'm like, holy shit, I gotta, I got fire in my belly. I gotta do something. And I immediately went back to this book. And I'm like, I I want to finish this. I need to finish this so I can move on to because it's meant to be a trilogy, three books. I have the entire story. So now you said. Now. Go ahead. Sorry. No. I was going say, you said something about that was wrong with the hard drive. So did you have to start from scratch again or what happened there? No, there were, look, I was working with writers that um, were friends of mine. Well, two of them were friends of mine. And um, I hired them and paid them to write the scripts for me based off of the story, which included some dialogue because I, I had to make sure that they understood where the story was going. But when they, they turned in their scripts, it was nothing that I asked for. <laughs> there's a little bit here and there, but one script brought by my buddy, I'm not going to say his name because it'll sound like I'm being derogatory about him. It's not. It's just he'd never written a script before. He's written books. It just wasn't his cup of tea. But they all mm -hmm. got paid, like I said, and I had to go back to the source material. And I kept clinging to some of the things they had written. 
And that was what was one thing that was clogging my brain for the past few years. I kept going, but uh, you know, they had written this in there and I'm like, fuck it. I threw it all out. Went back to the origins of what I had written and started writing it again. And I'm so happy with what I've done so far. I share it with, of course, script doctor. He reads everything I write. And even he's pleased. He's going to be my e editor, by the way. I made the announcement this nice. morning. He's the editor on the book. And he's so pleased with some of the shit. Like the opening prologue now. There's an opening prologue that is a 22, almost 18 to 22 page story itself. And it seems so non sequitur to the rest of the story. But in the overall story arc, you'll go, oh, that's what that was about. And I'm opening it with this this weird scene, and it's sort of a nod to Six Days of the Condor, the book, um, and the movie yeah. Three Days of the Condor. I was gonna say now we should probably show the trailer out just so people have an idea of what kind of story you're telling here. So yeah, and, uh, somebody who was it that did the voice on this? I don't know, some asshole. <laughs> I can get it to play. Ruru. Meet the Seattle Vigilante. Like so many comic heroes, this warrior hides his identity. But his identity isn't the only secret he has to keep. After grievous wounds received during combat, Tier 1 operator John Russell begins to recover and comes to terms with his new reality of being an amputee. And as he learns how to use his new prosthetic limb, he finds himself caught up in the bureaucratic red tape that too many wounded veterans experience the exhausting med board process. Out of sheer frustration, John takes it out on the criminal scum of the city. But when reality kicks in, John realizes he started something that's having an impact on the greater world around him, and thus has to reevaluate his motives. And moreover, just how far is John willing to go to finish this war he's declared against the criminals in Seattle? And will he even survive? From the creator of IDW's award-winning graphic novel, Code Word Geronimo, comes a new story about a different kind of warrior, Vindicated Inc., a first-of-its-kind disabled veteran action hero comic. The Vindicated Inc. graphic novel crowdfunding campaign on FundMyComic.com is provided in the description of this video. We hope you become a contributor. Please share this link. Thank you. There you go, you guys. You did really good on that, man. Originally, Dale Dye was supposed to do it, but he got sick, and he couldn't do it. And you stepped in for me, man. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm still going to get Dale to do another trailer for me. Um, that's one of the great things about well, working for Dale Dye is I, could, I have him in my hip pocket for cool things. David Jacobs is upset that it's not gay enough, so... Well, I made a joke this morning <laughs> that one of the guy, one of my a marine buddy of mine, said, uh, "So what's what's his big secret?" <laughs> I said, "Oh, he's doing all this cool ass kicking and he's gay in the military." <laughs> and my buddy's like, "Really?" I went, "No," and that's why Marines eat crayons because he's a Marine. My buddy, <laughs> you guys, they're yeah. gullible. <laughs> so here you they're go, guys. This is Vindicated Inc. Uh, go ahead, Andre. Yeah, no, I just want to say I can't wait to read that. It looks amazing. I will let you read. Actually, actually if you scroll down uh, a little bit, you'll see there's the there's Richard Bonk. He'll be doing one chapter, the flashback chapter. That's an alternate cover. And right there are two links that people can go there and read two of the chapters. Nice. For Very free. Nice. The entire book's going to be 155 pages. It's, it's a thick graphic novel. There's so much going on in this story. And it's, you know, it's um, in the opening page. I, I put it on there. I'm adding a little something right here. I added something to it in the new edit uh, because I didn't just want to say that this is my love song to every warrior who's uh, left a piece of themselves on the battlefield. I also wanted to add that they, and for them that have brought something home with them from war. And, uh, this this is uh, a story about a soldier dealing with some of the horrific stuff that goes on. I worked in the VA uh, when I was in the military. I got to do some temporary duty there, and I love working with uh, disabled vets. I have a lot of friends, and I'm close friends with Jeff Searcy, who used to be 
one of the senior officers over at uh, Wounded Warrior Project. And we're still close friends. In fact, he was the first person I called when I came up with the story for this, this book. And I, he was, I wanted to see what reaction he had to this idea in my head. And he loved it so much that he wrote the official afterword for the book. But um, I've asked Mike Barron if he'd be interested in doing the introduction. And then he interrupted me and says, I want to do the introduction of this book. He's been, he and Chuck Dixon have said so many nice things about this book so far. Well, as usual, man, I mean, your art is just amazing. Cause I mean, look at that. You. I mean, by the way, that's my buddy Fahim Fazli. He's been a guest on my show a lot. He's the guy that shoots him. That character, he helped me create that character, Captain Jabari from uh, the Afghani special forces. And that's such a dramatic scene. And I think the most emotional one that hit a lot of my vet buddies is this one right here. When he turns and looks over and he sees somebody putting his foot, his foot that's been amputated from the shin down. There's Del Dye and his wife, Julia, there in the book. <laughs> Him and yeah, that sexy mustache. Really, really powerful. Thank you. Uh, and the first chapter is just so heavy because you discover that John is haunted by this kid. And the flashback scene I told you about that Richard Bonk mm -hmm. is going to illustrate explains who the kid is and why he's haunted by him. Spoilers. Uh, is it a real ghost or is it just his brain? Because he assumes it's his brain. <laughs> that That's a, a You got to save some for the book, Geary. <laughs> There's so much going on here, dude. Uh, I could tell you something and you say, hi, Six. I love Six. Um, but uh, well, yeah, no, no, we're glad to see you launch your campaign here, and uh, hopefully, uh, it's very successful. Uh, we're sharing the link in the chat. I'm going to share it again here just to uh, make sure people see it. Uh, and six sends in five dollars from the background and says, Hi, Geary. I know, it's so <laughs> uh, so there's the link, guys. Head on over there and uh, sign up for Vindicated Inc. right now. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, and like I said, this is about veteran issues. And at some point when we start to move forward to the publishing side of this, I don't know if we're going to self-publish or if I'm – because Script and I have talked about partnering up uh, through his publishing stuff. And mm -hmm. it's something I'd be very interested in doing with him because uh, oh. he and I are very good friends. I don't – yeah. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. I, I think you knew that, Tom. I don't know if Andre knew, but Script and I talk all the time, and he's I, just uh, Script talks know, to everybody. But I'm not surprised. Yeah, our first phone call was nine hours. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Oh, wow. I, yeah, he talks yeah. to other people a lot more than he talks to me. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, but we got... he's just I get him, and I love writers. I understand yeah, writers because awesome. I am one. Yeah. And we just got a new member out of David Jacobs. Thank you for that, David Jacobs. Yeah, but yeah, thank you for uh, hopping on and sharing your campaign, which you just launched here. So hopefully people will check that out and uh, help you out with that. You guys and, uh, got any questions about it before I go? Um, I mean, I know more about it than anybody. So, I mean, as far as like, I already kind of have any questions I'd had kind of answered before, but as you said, this is kind of based upon just your experience in service. And uh, was there any people other I inspirations? Knew. And people yeah. you knew, John's um, personality is mine, the main character. No, but he's actually based on two guys I knew. So That's, that any... would be uh, that would be my question. That is um, the people that you were that based this on, and the people that you know in the service. Like, uh, how much have you shown to this, and what's their response? Well, here's something interesting. Uh, a lot of the characters in there are actually film and TV actor friends of mine. They all signed their likeness agreements, including Zach Ward. Um, uh, oh, I just forgot his name. Um, Langston uh, Fishburne, Lawrence's Fishburne's son. Uh, just a lot of actors. And Kurt Yeager from Sons of Anarchy. Uh, he's actually got a, a prosthetic leg, and he's been in a lot of shows, NCIS, like a lot. And he has uh, he's my partner, technically, even though he's not involved with the comic book, that if we ever option it, he steps in as a producer and has first right of refusal to play the main character in the, in if it's made into a film or a TV show. And I'm, I'm all, I'm all up to that. And he saw the, the, 
the idea is like something he wanted to do because, well, when I first met John, um, I mean, Kurt and tell him about John, I originally had pictured uh, a double leg amputee and that's what he was in, in the scripts that I had started writing. <laughs> so when I met Kurt, he's got one leg missing. And so the first thing I said, I asked him was, uh, so how method are you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Indeed. Mm. Actually, he, I have a follow up on he goes, yeah. I'm not that method. <laughs> yeah. I have a, I have a follow up there because also th this is something that mm. I see like with with many movies that deal with like amputations and, and injuries like the injury happens. You're now missing a leg, you're on prosthetic and everything is fine. Whereas in reality, the prosthetic thing, that's the least of issues uh, because you're mm. dealing with the nerve pain and all stuff like this phantom limb pain and basically just pain through the sh shot oftentimes for the rest of your life like get like that what's the name of like the c, c it's called phantom PRS. limb pain yeah but and there's another feels... one like this is, is this something that you deal with at all the reality of an amputation well, you, your reality is, is changed when yeah. it, this is the new life that you're going to be living and you've got to adjust to it. And he's, it, it, see, the big thing with him and what leads him down this path is, um, I haven't even gotten into the dark part of this story, that there are people pulling strings in, in this story. And you don't know how far they pulled these strings to do what's going on. He is uh, being supervised by a therapist who ends up red flagging him for PTSD even though he's physically ready to go, he's learned how to work on his prosthetic and he can go back to his unit and fight. Okay. He's ready to go. And then he gets red flagged and he gets stuck in the med board process, which can be a real nightmare for veterans. And it used to be like something that would take days to weeks. Now it can take uh, up to two or three years and your life is in limbo. Your career is in limbo. You don't know what's going to happen to you. And it's, it's, it's frustrating. To, to people who are still active duty trying to get their career going back. And uh, he gets stuck in this cycle, and that's when he takes it out on a criminal. Uh, he beats the shit out of a guy trying to rob a convenience store. Uh, and he enjoys it so much, the adrenaline rush. Uh, and there's, there's this thing that comes out to these soldiers that end up doing uh, multiple deployments. They, some of them can become war junkies. They like that rush. They want to live that rush. And he's kind of hitting that a little bit while he's away from it. And so doing this feels good to him. But then, like it says in the trailer, he starts to realize he's having an impact. This, this is something he was doing like an lark. And now it's like, oh, shit, I'm having an impact on, on people. I, I need to stop doing this or, or maybe do it for the right reason. And it makes him reassess things. And he partners up with two other disabled veterans. One of them based off of my grandfather, uh, who suffered from severe PTSD from World War I and shook till the day he died. But um, uh, I wanted to just talk about these guys, what they go through, what it feels like. I've got PTSD, not from the military. I got it from a kidnapping. But uh, um, I understand what it is and how it works. And I use it to my benefit. And a lot of veterans do. Hollywood doesn't understand what PTSD is. They, they really don't. They, they always show the, the broken or dysfunctional aspect of it. And that's not all PTSD does. A lot of these guys learn to use it to help motivate them and move them forward. And they don't understand that. That's the part that Hollywood never gets. Well, and it's pretty obvious in, uh, from Andre's question, just from your saying before, that you had a lot of real world inspiration on this. Um, but I'm real curious as far as like, uh, we know you have a, you know, you're a huge comic book fan. Anybody who's watched any of your streams or seen you on any of our streams knows you love movies and, and other stuff like that. So what was your inspirations outside of real world? What other things kind of, uh, uh, well, I saw you, that movie battle the yeah. art or movies or other books. Yeah, go ahead. Well, definitely, uh, the movie battleship, even though it was a silly film, uh, they had, uh, Colonel, uh, um, uh, Gadsden on there in the movie and he's playing a soldier who lost both his legs and that's why in my comic originally it was going to be a double amputation 
uh, because he inspired me to do, to do that. Because I wasn't sure if I was going to make the wounds external or internal at first. And once I saw him do that, I was like, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I want to do. Uh, you know, salute to, to these veterans that have lost their, their limbs in the war. Instead of just the scars inside, it's the, this guy is both. Uh, and uh, so that's one film. And it's just simply that one character played by a real veteran that helped inspire some things. But the movie, um, uh, The Park is Mine with Tommy Lee Jones had an impact on me. Mm -hmm. Rolling Thunder with yeah. William Devane oh, yeah. and Tommy Lee Jones again. Great flick. Uh, Great Tommy flick. is good yeah. friends with my boss, Dale. They, they love each other. And they talk quite often. And uh, Tommy is a great love for veterans. And uh, and he's done a really good job representing him in film. But th these are all films that lay in there as in part of the inspiration for what I'm doing. Which and all those movies play. kind of in turn inspired The Punisher. So, I mean, I guess in a yeah. vicarious way, I can see Which that. is why Chuck and Mike Barron, yeah. Chuck Dixon and Mike Barron, love my story. Because my story is the challenge to the Punisher and Batman. Cause it's, it's actually a discussion that was in the original script, but I took it out because I was afraid of copyright issues that they're debating how Batman would do it or how the Punisher would really do it. And that's really what they do in the book is, is he shows how it, it would require someone at, at the level of a tier one operator, somebody that is mm -hmm. um, top of the line, special forces. You right. know, Delta, uh, SEAL Team, whatever. They, they don't do the numbers anymore. Um, but you've got the, the whole thing, which is tier levels of, of uh, the special ops teams. And uh, they absolutely do um, have this special training. And he's very good at troublemaking and not creating a paper trail. All of his weapons, everything he gets is through illicit means he he um he threatens a arms dealer and says if you ever deal to anybody else other than me i will kill you i'll make sure you have plenty of money and we'll, we can be good friends but if you break this deal you're dead you're on borrowed time while working with me and so the guy does and uh supplies him everything he needs and in the book he's never called vindicated He's not vindicated. He's the he's the Seattle v vigilante. Uh, vindicated Inc. is the name of the company that the three disabled vets open. It's an airsoft company that sells airsoft style guns and yeah, armor. Spoilers, man. Spoilers. Upstairs. Well, it's really not part of the plot. I know. I'm just picking know. on you. But it's it's you know they they the name Vindicated. We all call him Vindicated. I call him Vindicated. But the fact is that's not his name. He's just the vigilante. And his name is John Russell. He's named after uh, one of my best friends that I grew up with. Uh, he's kind of my big brother uh, growing up in Virginia. And he's somebody that I'm still very close to to this day. Plus, he's also named after the Paul Newman character in Ombre, who's also named as John Russell. My dad's favorite Paul Newman movie ever. All right. Well, my check daddy. it out, guys. Uh, I think it looks like you got a couple of supporters since the show is, uh, since we started here talking to That's you. So. I need that kind of movement, man. I say, I, I think it, it did, uh, from my memory. So yeah, uh, check it out guys. Vindicated Inc. right now from our good buddy, Gary. Uh, and, uh, I do a show with Gary every other week, uh, on his channel. In fact, it'll be this weekend. <laughs> it should be. I have to talk to you about that. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. I say, I'm going to have to. I have to work some out, but we'll see. All right. Well, yeah, thank you for that. I never worry. Because I have it. a family Christmas party upcoming this weekend. That's what I, yeah. I'll yeah. If you can't do it, we'll, I'll find something else to do. I've got plenty of movies to help promote this because I'm going to be talking about some of those films we just mentioned. Well, that's a good idea. There you go. If not, maybe I'll find a substitute to sit in for me. But uh, I want to thank you, Gary, for coming in and uh, and telling us about your new campaign. I appreciate and hopefully, it, guys. Uh, you have some great success on it. I appreciate it, man. And uh, thanks again, guys. Andre, I'll see you later, my friend. And yeah, I will absolutely. get with you about doing a Blade Runner show because we really do need to do one. Yeah, we do. And we six do. months yeah. to know when we're review reviewing Twilight. Um, February 31st next year. <laughs> there you go. You have a date. <laughs> we are doing the thing in January, though. Eventually, yes, we're doing the thing. Uh, It'll be fun because so, yeah. that's one of my favorite films of all time. 
So January is when Conan comes out in 4K as well. Ooh. Ooh. We got to do another so, Conan yeah. then. Was it not like so, delayed in February or something? Uh, What's that? I think it. I think it only got delayed by like a week. I'd have to look again. Okay. But then again, yeah. my my my. Uh, I keep getting almost every day an email from Arrow that my Tremors is delayed, but yet I keep seeing all these reviewers and stuff get theirs, and I'm like, hmm, interesting. But anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Hey, before I go, just let you both yeah. know, Andre, Tom, in the private chat is the link to three chapters you can read. Oh, awesome. Awesome thank sauce. You. And thank you for that. I think you emailed me. Please give me well. feedback. That's the only thing I ask. I'll yeah. try to well, get you to write a review. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, being here today, Gary. We're hopefully we can help you out with this campaign and uh, we'll talk to you very, very soon. And we're going to get out of here ourselves. So I want to thank everybody in the chat for being here today. Thank you six for helping in the background. And of course all the mods, I see D bud Martin still here uh, and everybody else who was with us today. Thank you so much for that. Daryl Brewer as well. I see uh, Dr. Coffin nails, I think is here. Uh, thank you guys again. Uh, thank you all for the support. And uh, Andre, when are we? Uh, do we have a plan yet for a member stream, or are we still working on that? I, well, I was asking you when. Uh, when when does it work for you? So uh, I don't think we have. A, I don't think we have a slot just yet, but we will have one, and it's going to be soon inside the next week. Uh, we just have to lock down the date between us and find a find a time that uh, that uh, works for, uh, for for both of us and with the programming. But it'll be very soon, and information will come indeed all right well with that uh we'll let you know as soon as we know uh keep an eye out for that and if not we'll definitely give you a, an idea of when that will be wednesday we have to figure out when that is with christmas parties and stuff coming up here it's going to be difficult but we'll try and work it out so until then uh take care of yourselves and each other and it is time for some koalas in the rain koalas in the rain koalas in the rain no fucks given Koala's in the rain, koala's in the rain, no fucks given, koala.